Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. Uh, in the last episode we started, well we learned how to migrate our room database um, and add an additional table to it which is going to hold all of our categories, our user created categories. And in today's episode I'm just gonna briefly walk through some quality of life things that actually came as a recommendation from my girlfriend when I asked her for some feedback on what we've built so far and I think it's actually pretty useful because I found myself um, working around the issue that she provided a solution for. So uh, before we get started I'm gonna just let you know that we went ahead and updated our color palette here. I know in a previous episode I mentioned that uh, you know my phone's in dark mode when I had this on uh, dark mode on my real device it looked a little weird so I went with a little bit more of almost a gray scale um, and then kind of like a little rusty accent color here uh, I think it looks pretty nice not gonna lie for you know this light mode I think it's very nice and then uh, when we flip over to dark mode here I think it just uh, actually looks even better and that's the way I like to build apps where dark mode looks better because it'll just keep me in dark mode more times than not so um, I'm actually really liking the way this came out uh, in general and I'm just very happy with it because I'm a big fan of dark mode. So uh, if you enjoy the new color palette, go ahead and uh, you know give this video a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And if not, we can always revert back or if you end up pulling the project down on your local computer, you can always revert back. I made a commit that makes it pretty obvious uh, where I made this change. But anyway, um, so the issue here was about quantity, right? So we oftentimes are just going to write bananas and then, you know, I ended up writing like X6 or X4 or something along those lines. Uh, but she was like, what if there was some way that you can go ahead and kind of update that um, easily? So I think it's a good suggestion because it solves a problem. And also, I don't think we've covered the UI element, the progress bar yet on this channel. So I figured it would also kind of you know, kind of knock two things out at once here uh, and introduce the channel to the a pretty popular UI element. On top of that, I'm kind of sick and tired of looking at this uh, bottom bar here. And if we remember, we actually set that all up in our main activity, the bottom navigation. So there is a pretty simple and, and nice way to go about changing this. Um, we can add on the nav controller that exists at our activity level, which is really the gatekeeper for all the different screens we navigate to. We can add a destination change listener. It gives us a few arguments that are passed in, but the one that we're gonna care about here is the destination itself. Because as you can see here, destination is a nav destination object, and from that we can actually fetch its ID, which in turn will be the ID of the fragment for our nav graph, so these IDs here. Now what's convenient about that is we've also made um, the app bar configuration have a set of our top level fragments here, right? The r.id.home fragment, the r.id.profile fragment, so we can use these pieces of information to our advantage here. So we can simply say if our app bar configuration uh, dot top level destinations, which you can see here is a set of integers dot contains the destination ID. This means we are in a top level destination. Otherwise, we are not in a top level destination. So with that being said, we can actually, I'm going to extract this to a variable here really quickly. I'm going to use that variable here. Actually, don't need to have the nav host fragment nav controller. We have that, and then we can all condense this to one line. So that's pretty convenient. All right, we're going to add our destination change listener to show slash hide. Okay, so. Uh, inside of the case where we actually do have a top-level destination containing where we are, we're going to want to go ahead and show this. So we can say is visible equals true. 
and then otherwise we can say is gone equals true. So if we go ahead and rerun this, we should see this thing here disappear, well, where it was, we should see that disappear as we move to a fragment that is not a top level, right? So if we're gonna go ahead and navigate between our profile and our home fragment, all, good, all is good, we can do that. And then if we go to this next screen, we do not have that top uh, or that bottom navigation, nor do we have it here. You know, it's not hidden by the keyboard or anything like that. The view is actually just gone. And then when we return to the screen, we actually, um, you know, get it back. And if we were to return to the profile screen, we would also get it back. So this is convenient because we will also won't have to change this implementation if we decide to add more elements to this bottom nav, right? If instead of two, this bottom nav setup can have up to five tabs. So if we go ahead and add three more or anywhere between one and three more elements down here, as long as we set up our app bar configuration properly, which we will need to in order for the navigation to work, uh, this code will run the same because we're referencing the top level destinations variable, not some hard coded value. So as we change the set that exists here, this logic will also kind of incorporate that. So on top of that, we now have the idea here of, I'm just gonna rerun it so that we get rid of that flashing, uh, the progress bar being injected into this uh, layout here. So I think it might make sense to put it, so we have a little bit of direction here for how I'm gonna change this UI or this layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So enjoy the time-lapse. Okay, so welcome back everybody. Um, took a little longer than I expected, but I kind of made like small little sections that exist here uh, by putting a little text views there. But point being, we have a seek bar. I apologize, I think I called it a progress bar before, and that's not really the correct term. Uh, but seek bar, you could see it kind of snapping from position to position as it's selected, the little thumb of it gets a little bit bigger as it starts moving around. Um, there is a small ripple there. It's a little difficult to see in dark mode. Maybe it's a little easier in light mode. Uh, but you know, it's just part of the palette of UI elements. Yeah, there it is. That um, you know is at our disposal, disposal, and that we can use. Uh, I think the only two or some important attributes here are the min and max values. So when we actually attach listeners to this and basically get a callback when all this stuff changes there's a range that it can go between and we're gonna leave it at one because you can't have a quantity less than one, right? Because you're adding an item. So you're gonna need at least one of those items that you're adding. 
Uh, and then 10, it's just an arbitrary number. Uh, maybe we can set it as like a preference in the future. But, um, okay, this isn't a scroll view, so it will scroll. Uh, but it it will cap out at some point, and uh, so it is, what it, it is what it is. But, um, you know, otherwise you can kind of click to a certain region on the bar, and it will just kind of snap to, I guess, whatever is closest to it when it figures out, you know, you can imagine this bar being broken up into tenths here. And so whichever section you click to that it's closest to, it'll just kind of snap that way. Uh, so with that in mind, we can go ahead and navigate back to our add item entity fragment. And my thought process here, instead of actually going ahead and updating, um, updating a particular item entity, like the whole data that exists here, um, sorry, the, the schema that exists here and adding like a quantity field. I'm thinking that we will just modify the title um, text that exists in place and just kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, I guess put like the number in parentheses next to it. So then on the main screen, you'll kind of see something that just makes sense in the title. Uh, so that's my thought process there is so we're not the migrated database again and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and in our on view created, we're going to have to go ahead and set up set things up for it. So the binding, uh, what is it called? Quantity seek bar, set on seek bar change listener. And we're gonna have to add an object that extends the seek bar on seek bar change listener. And then there's gonna be yeah, a few uh, methods that we're gonna have to override. However, there's going to be only a few, the progress change that we're going to actually care about. I guess this is uh, touch callbacks to let you know when certain things have actually started um, and stopped. And I think we could maybe utilize those if we go ahead and make some customization around this UI element. But for now, we're just going to leave it as the bare bones version and just uh, hook into exactly this element here, the progress. So, um, what I would like to do here is let's imagine we have again the the nanas as our um, example. As we slide this quantity, I would want to be modifying this text that exists here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that logically speaking, right? So we're going to go ahead and fetch the current text is going to be the binding title edit text uh, to string trim I believe that's kind of the what we give it yeah so we give it here however we need to care about this case here right so if we say if the current text dot is empty, then we're just going to return. There's basically nothing to do here. Maybe we can notify the user like, hey, you know, add something into the text field before you change this. But otherwise, we're going to say uh, val new text is going to be the, sorry, uh, current text. And then in parentheses here, we're just very easily going to add progress and that comes from our little uh, callback here that the, the little parameter that we get passed in to this function and so we're just basically gonna create a new string based on the progress and we're gonna go ahead and set this just like uh, we do when we are uh, what's it called Right here, when we're like you know editing something, right? We set up the screen with the content that we have, so we're going to do the same exact thing here. And then instead of the yes, perfect. And then we're going to set the selection to be the new text dot length. So let's just go ahead and give this a whirl, and see how it looks. All right, so we're back here. If we go ahead and Um, what? Oh, uh, that makes a lot of sense. We were not actually, uh, we want that one. 
we were not actually oh man that's silly we were not actually calling basically get text we were actually just calling to string on the element itself the UI element so that's why we were getting like memory address locations and such <laughs> but you can see here as this moves with nothing in our title uh, nothing happens right and then if we type can't type bananas Ooh, take a look at that. Uh huh. That is what we call very, very interesting. All right, so I'm afraid that if we use parentheses, it's going to be a little bit too obvious. Uh, too, not sorry, not too obvious. It's going to be a little too generic, right? Like you might actually use parentheses in the title that you're trying to describe. Uh, so after thinking about it for a tiny bit here, uh, I'm going to end up using these little greater than less than signs here to kind of act as parentheses instead. And we can try to do a little string matching on that um, or, or with these values in order to actually kind of come up with the correct text that we want to modify instead of this insanely large chain that honestly I did not even think about was going to happen until I saw it happening. So we have our current text at this point. I'm going to say um, the end index is going to be that we're looking for current text dot um, index of this guy minus one uh, if the end index is greater than zero we're gonna say well we can still set new text to this right so we can say um, i think we can leave this alone and then instead of current text we're just going to do current text uh, that substring from the end index which is a little weird so I'm just gonna go ahead and say start index as our uh, variable name and let's go ahead and see if that works so this will actually return negative one if this isn't found in the string so then subtracting one from that will just push it further past zero so that's why we have this little check for if it's greater than zero and if it is, then we basically want to have the substring of that. So we want to have whatever is in this current text variable up until this point, minus one. Uh, we might need to do minus two because I'm going to assume there's going to be a space there as well. So we'll just take a look at that. Um, and then our progress. Otherwise, we're just going to say we're fine with how it should. The string is fine, so it shouldn't have a problem bananas let's just pretend that didn't happen that's why I was thinking about it being uh, the end index wonderful now we're getting the effect that we're looking for. It looks like we have the um, correct subtraction by one because we're already accounting for the space, right? Because the index would be the index before that character. And so now we're just basically modifying our title based upon what, how this thing is sliding. Um, and then we're at a max of 10 with a minimum of one. So I think it kind of looks silly at this point to have the one, so we can do a little bit more logic in there. And then we're just gonna say, I think we could just do it like this. Seems a little odd. But I think that would work. Actually, does this return a string? Yes, it does. All right, so Ooh. We've crashed at runtime here. Let's see what does this say. Set span 1111 11 beyond lengths. Ah. 
Yep, that's because we're telling the length to be something uh, larger than what it is. So let's go ahead and just add another variable here. Val sanitized text is going to equal this guy. And then we're going to set that sanitized text. And we're going to use that sanitized text length for the selection. So at this point, if it contains that little one, we're just going to go ahead and remove it. And we should have no more index out of bounds issues. So let's just say beans. And we need perfect. Look at that. Two. Nothing. Splendid. This is... Um, this is working working out really well so far. So if we just like delete some of this, it just kind of picks back up. If we, yeah, I mean that seems pretty stable from what I can tell. Um, I think the only issue is if you know we have nothing here, and then we go ahead and type something, uh, we don't add you know like the quantity that we want we're gonna to have to go ahead and play with it in order for it to actually rewrite the title on the screen here but the idea the idea excuse me is bananas we need four of them at a medium priority and then if we go back we can get rid of this one and instead we'll have bananas with the you know whatever for four so maybe Maybe we'll do these. Instead, I think that makes sense. Yeah. So then instead, we can go ahead and just use those little square brackets. And I think that'll make it a little bit more uh, readable. You know, this is like, not really all that user friendly, let's say. So if we say cans o beans, and we really need seven of them, so we're gonna make that a high priority. Yeah, exactly. So that actually doesn't look bad. Um, I feel like that's a pretty good way to represent quantity there, so we shall leave it as is. Um, so I guess the next issue that we're gonna to have to tackle is the fact that the, everything else resumes except the quantity here, and <laughs> LOL, now this looks really weird, but, um, the progress bar was not set basically. So if we go ahead and uh, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We set things up here. Uh, let's say if our where is it? Item entity title dot contains. We're gonna say this. <clears throat> that we're gonna go ahead and find the uh, progress from there. So the progress is going to be the string, item entity, a title, substring from, let's do start index to end index, and we're gonna find these, start, index is going to equal uh, item entity title index of this guy and then just say end index is going to be the index of that uh, so I think we have to add one to this actually because it's going to be at like this point in the string and we're going to want to collect what's after it which is cool, then we're gonna say two int, and then our binding dot uh, seek bar, we can set the progress via the setter that exists there. So as long as my little arithmetic here is correct, we shall be fine with uh, basically setting things back up here. So yes, it does seem like that is the case. This is likely seven. That looks about 70% 70, 70 of the way there. If we update this to 10 and go all the way, we could probably very easily see that it works. 
And then if we go ahead and update it to zero uh, or one, I guess, you know, which is a redundant amount of quantity. Uh, yep. Yep. Looks good. This looks, uh, this looks pretty good. So this is a little scary here, you know, as far as like we can have, you could very easily not have this be an integer that exists between these two things. If the user were to just make something themselves with that started with this bracket and ended with that bracket, right? If they pulled something like this and updated it and we clicked on this, well, we're going to have to now, but it's going to go ahead and crash because it tries to convert a to an integer. So, Yep, right there. So you know what, let's just wrap this in a try catch and be done with it here. Try that, catch it. Uh, so I think now if they click on it, uh, basically nothing will happen, which is probably better than uh, it crashing. So, yep, looks good to me. Um, let's see the stack trace. No, I don't think we do because I don't print it out. But anyway, uh, we know that that crashed just before. So obviously we need to kind of take that into account. So uh, that's why we're wrapping it and try catch there. So um, we've done a reasonable amount here in this episode. We kind of updated this layout a little bit. We added this. Oh, look at that. It actually replaced the A. That's too funny. Um, we've gone ahead and introduced the seek bar to allow the user to basically update the quantity of things very quickly. Um, and the good news is this would happen if, you know, they were like, you know, talking about the description, changing this, and instead of going back and updating it, they can just very easily slide this and they don't have to actually change any text here. Um, you can just like kind of click to where you want it to be and, and then everything is all good. So. Uh, with that being said, uh, and then we've removed the bottom navigation here uh, on the screens that it shouldn't exist on. And I have no idea what that is. That's a little funky, I'll tell you that much. Um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, thanks for sticking around. If you made it this far, I'd appreciate a like or a subscription. I know this episode went on a little long, but... Uh, Thanks for sticking with me and excited to continue uh, building this out. So I'll catch you in the next one.